What's going on, guys? Welcome to episode number 68 here on the Proven Knowledge Podcast. This is the Creator Series. Today, I welcomed a fellow Northeast Ohio musician. He's from Cleveland. Uh, his name is Kyle Malik. I discovered Kyle's music, I believe, last year, right before the pandemic or maybe during the pandemic, uh, when I had more free time and I was doing a lot of artist searches. And I found this kid from Cleveland. Uh, he had just put out his first EP, I think. The, probably the fall before this maybe 2019 i have to go back and look at the dates and everything um called teenage love story and i was just infatuated by what i heard his voice the production um he is an incredible talent and i'll just you know put it out there you guys should all check out his music um today we talked about what it's been like for him in cleveland uh he's only 22 years old which makes it even more impressive to me um, he discussed potentially moving soon from Cleveland to either LA or Atlanta. Uh, he's still on the fence about which one, uh, probably to just pursue more opportunity for his career. Uh, we talked about live shows and what his experiences like that have been so far. He hadn't got to perform a lot of live shows because of the pandemic, but I think he'll be getting out there soon again uh, to perform in front of his fans and everything. Um, we talked about some of his influences as well. And we also discussed the importance of, as an artist, being able to be relatable to your audience uh, and your fans and everything, and really just the message that he wants to leave people with in his music being, you know, as vulnerable as he is and uh, pouring all out a lot of his emotions into the music, which is one of the reasons I you know, was drawn to his songs in the first place. So, you know, I appreciate Kyle for his time. I'm looking forward to hopefully linking up on music very soon. We've had discussions uh, in the past few months about working together. Um, so I'm looking forward to everything he's got coming up. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, it was a very special episode. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome, everyone, to episode number 68 here on the Proven Knowledge Podcast. This is the Creator Series. Today we have a really incredible singer-songwriter, uh, amazing all-around artist. This guy's from Cleveland, Ohio. Really love his music. Kyle Malik is here. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yes, no problem. And like I said, you know, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to be here. And I'm kind of interested to know a little bit more about you as well. So to start off every episode, we have, you know, the artist give a little bit of background, how you got into music, how long you've been doing it, uh, just the basic information for those that might not be familiar with you and your music. Okay, yeah, no. So, um, well, everybody, my name is Kyle Malik. Uh, I'm 22 years old. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, the way I got into music was I grew up a choir kid, so I literally was in choir maybe, like, when I, was, I started off maybe, like, when I was, like, six, seven, like, always singing um, and writing. So, like, summer camps. Uh, the first big thing that I did was, like, singing angels. And then I went to Cleveland School of the Arts after that. So, and then I pursued voice in college. So, I've, it's always been in me. But as far as pursuing it, I started in 2019. Um, and, yeah, I just kind of went from there. You know what I mean? So, it just, it's always been instilled in me. But as far as the writing and everything, I've always done it. But to take it serious, it took for me to kind of, like, leave school. Mm -hmm and just, you know, focus on my passion. Yeah. Yeah, I was curious to see if you were, like, in college or anything at the moment, because I knew you were a little younger than I was, so I was like, I didn't know if you were still in school kind of doing that, or you were just pursuing the artist thing, so. But that's awesome, man. I'm, I'm yeah. glad to hear that you're going full in on it, and just from, like, hearing that first EP, I think it was called, what, Teenage Love Story? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. that. Dude, that first EP... Oh my god, that's what got me hooked right there. Like freaking chasing time, Thank you. pills. I was like, come on. Like, this, these guys, I appreciate you. Yeah, I love great. chasing time to death. That's my favorite. That's probably one of my favorites as well. Like, I think I still have that in one of my playlists on Spotify. So, great, great song. Man. Oh wow, that's great. Yeah. And that that kind of leads Thank me into you. my next question, which is, to me, you're someone that probably sits down and crafts their songs like you craft your songs very detailed and i can tell everything you put in your music is very personal and you know you have a story behind everything so how does the writing process go for you from song to song does it always change or has it been pretty similar throughout all the songs you've done so far um well honestly so i'm the type of artist like i write consistently mm -hmm. but um 
I'm really the type of artist that, like, it has to really speak to me. So, like, um, usually my writing process consists of my emotions. So I'll start off kind of writing poetry uh, and then writing, like, certain words that go with my feelings. And every time I start a song, I usually, like, I know a lot of artists do chorus first, but I usually do verse first, which is weird. Um, and, yeah, like, I... So I'll, I'll, like, go from there, and then, or I might sometimes name song first, too, based off of those emotions that I wrote down. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I, I started out. But, yeah, the process is the same, um, except for when I face writer's block, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So are you someone that likes to change kind of song structure, like, with every song? Like, are you, like, a verse, chorus, verse type of person, or does it not really, does that change, too, every song? Like, do you just approach it a different way each time? <laughs> I think the older that I'm getting, I'm learning how to write a lot more free. Mm -hmm. um, I used to be very verse chorus, verse chorus, um, because I feel like that's good for the attention span for certain mm -hmm. people. But you know, like nowadays, everybody is so like microwavable, and you know, no one really cares about a bridge. You know, so mm -hmm. I feel like when I'm making an EP, it's kind of like I'm like, let me just give them something. I know that. It's gonna, they're gonna hear it, they're gonna love it, but it's like, I don't wanna have too much of their time, mm -hmm. but then it's like, I want them to want more. So, but now that I'm maturing in my writing and stuff like that, I try my best to not care so much about that, you know? Yeah. Like, that's gonna come. So, yeah, now I kinda just, I switch it up now. Like, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll do chorus first. It just depends on my mood. Yeah. See, the bridge is super underrated in songs, because I love when there's like, Say we start with the we start with like a verse or we start with the with the chorus doesn't matter if you go like right before the last hook and you put a bridge like a change up that's like amazing to yeah. me. Like every time an artist does that I'm like see that yeah. that spices it up a little bit you know what I mean it makes it makes you come back yeah. you know so and see only only certain artists can do that mm -hmm. too so but like the new age artists I I feel as though you know are kind of, I don't want to say microwavable, because it's not really their fault. It's mm -hmm. kind of just, you know, how society is now. Mm -hmm. But you have to be very special and innovative to make a, uh, a bridge. Mm -hmm. Like Frank Ocean, like his bridges are like always amazing. His song structure is just out of this world. So I feel like you got to really, if you're going to make a bridge, you got to commit mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. So you just mentioned yeah. Frank Ocean, right? I assume he is one of your top influences. So who else? Uh, it's, you know, artists that you listen to a lot or you'd say kind of has influenced your music up to this point? Um, honestly, so when I grew up on, like, pop music when I was a kid, mm -hmm. um, which is really funny. Uh, so I I would say, like, of course, um, Khalid. I always tell people I love Khalid. Uh, Frank, SZA, uh, Gaga, like, which mm -hmm. is crazy because her visual <laughs> aspect is like out of this world yeah. um i don't want to forget anybody i'm also i love pink sweats as mm -hmm. well um he's kind of someone that i've i've um learned to kind of get into because like i was making music before i discovered him but honestly just seeing him like i like his aesthetic i think it's really mm -hmm. dope so him for sure um yeah, that's just a few, basically. Yeah. I have a lot, though, like, so many. It's crazy, though. Yeah. I, I feel like Pink Sweats is, like, a super slept-on artist. Like, only certain people know about him right now because he's still kind of, like, on the come-up. Yeah. He only has, like, a few, like, projects out. But he's definitely yeah. he's definitely a dope artist. And I still got to check out SZA's song she put out yesterday. She put out, like, three new songs. Oh, my God, there. I didn't see it yet. Yeah, well, it's on SoundCloud, I guess. It's only SoundCloud, so but I'm going to have to check them out. Yeah, I got to sure. listen. Her? I gotta listen, but I did see like a snippet on her um, on her Instagram, and it sounded yeah. pretty cool. Her album is long overdue. Like that second album, I've been waiting. I'm like, come on, what is I've been happening? Waiting. <laughs> I need some type of inspiration. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and she always gives that to me. So yeah. for sure, definitely her. She's so amazing. Yeah. So do you have any dream collaborations? Maybe someone you like. It could be a producer, it could be an artist, like someone you've always thought, like, hey, our styles would mesh pretty well together if we ever did a song or a project. Yeah, um, I always wanted to collaborate. Oh my God, I'm sorry. I totally forgot about Janae Aiko, about oh, like yeah. my musical influences. Love Janae. Love so Janae. 
Yeah, I would love to collaborate with her. Um, she kind of was a huge inspiration behind Teenage Love Story because mm. um, I was really into her Trip album. And I, I don't know if you listen to Trip, but like yeah. that's uh, uh, so Janae. Um, I always want to do. I always wanted to do a song with like Timbaland, like mm. as far as like production. Because like when I was young, I was like obsessed with like Timbaland and Missy Elliott mm. and like their production. I don't know, it's weird. And um, who else? Well, of course, Frank. Of course, Frank Ocean. Mm-hmm. So those three for sure, and hopefully one day SZA. You know, yeah. I I think it's gonna happen. I'm gonna manifest it. Yeah, for sure. See now, when you say about the trip album, I hear pills, and now I'm like, okay, now I see the parallels there. Like it's kind of like yeah. that vibe. Yeah. Yeah. I see for exactly, sure. exactly Definitely. what you're saying. So yeah. I know that you. I've seen a lot of posts where you're like in studios up in Cleveland and whatnot, and you've been around to different places. So, do you prefer studios to record in, or have you ever done anything out of your home or whatever? Like, is there a preference for you, or it doesn't really matter? It's kind of just wherever you catch the energy, you're going to go in and record and lay it down. Yeah, so um, so I don't have a home studio, which I'm actually kind of embarrassed about that. As an artist, I feel like all artists should have a home studio. I think it's important. Mm-hmm. Um you know, just for like rough drafts, like ideas, etc. But for me, I had trouble finding a signature engineer mm. uh, because when COVID happened, uh, I had a, a signature engineer, and you know he wasn't accepting people when I wanted to work on music. So I had to kind of go around and like you know record here, there, everywhere, you know, just to find, you know, my new sound and what that was going to be. So, uh, I currently go to Signal Flow Studios. Um, his name is Chris DeCola. He's amazing. Like, he's also a guitarist. Like, he's awesome. So, right now I'm with him. So, he's helping working on the album. He did Cloud It. So, he's okay. he's pretty dope. Yeah. 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 But I like to go to studios just because... Um, I like the feel. So I usually write, of course, before I go into the studio. I try to make sure everything's done. And then when I go in, I just lay it. Mm. Yeah, I was, so, was kind of yeah. curious because I remember just even like last year, I think when you were working on music, I saw like posts of you in studios and whatnot. So I was just kind of curious to see like if there was a preference or whatever. But I think as far as like the home studio goes, you really don't need – that much so like you could definitely make it happen still like as long as you have a mic and an interface and your laptop and you can pretty much go from there and even if you don't want to like do the full thing yourself it's good for ideas i think to just lay things down and then come back to them but right yeah well maybe you can help me with that you know i i I can give you gear preferences (laughs) i got all kinds of stuff i actually had a, a young lady hit me up at the beginning of the year and she was asking kind of like what headphones should she get? What audio interface? So I just sent her like some products that I would recommend. So if you ever okay, need, I gotta, I gotta yeah. connect with you. There yeah, if you ever, need, if you ever got questions, I can do my best to kind of like steer you in the right direction for sure. So yeah, no, I love that, and yeah. it's dope because like I, I, my friend actually, I, I, he's an artist. His name's Denzel, and I went over his house yesterday because I cut his hair, and like he has a whole, you know lay our whole studio in his mm. house and I was like wow like this is really cool I'm like I gotta get like you so yeah, yeah for sure yeah I, I need to upgrade a lot of my equipment because I my, I know my audio interface is kind of like broke at this point because I've had it for five yeah. years but I'll I'll have to get the upgrades going here soon um <laughs> so obviously we you know you just talked about some people you're working with up in Cleveland has have you ever found any struggles as far as maybe finding opportunity in Cleveland. Have you ever considered moving elsewhere, going elsewhere for more opportunity, or have you found already a lot of traction where you're at currently? <clears throat> well, um, so in Cleveland, it's very uh, hip-hop, trap-based. Like, most of the people that make it out of here mm-hmm. are, like, rappers. <clears throat> so I feel like... I think I've definitely had a great start here. You know, I feel like a lot of people know who I am and, you know, they recognize my music, but I do think that I will have a better opportunity in another area. Mm-hmm. So I've been planning to move to LA for a couple of years now. I just had to, you know, grow up a little bit and mm-hmm. experience life, you know, because LA is it's hard out there. You know, you got to really be disciplined if you want to go. So, mm-hmm. um, 
I plan to move to LA next year. Um, I didn't want to speak too much about it because, like, I like to make sure it happens. Um, but I just feel like LA is just where I belong. You know, like I, I feel like when I went out there for the first time, I just fell in love. I feel like the vibe, the music, the people, I just feel like it fits me. I've always felt kind of misunderstood where I live, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So definitely LA and also Atlanta too. I've thought about Atlanta just because of certain labels down there. Um, and a lot of people are really making it up out of Atlanta now. So, yeah. but it's between LA and Atlanta. Yeah. Though. Well, whatever you decide, man, I'm sure it's going to work out great for you because, like I said, you already got the talent. So Thank just you. keep working hard, man. You can make it happen for sure. Like, no doubt. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I really do. That, that means a lot. Yeah. So in the past year, obviously, we've all dealt with a lot of crazy things, you know, COVID and everything happening, and a lot of things have been shut down and things like that. Um, what do you think for you personally is a hurdle that you've had to overcome in the last year? It could be music-related or life-related or both. Um, well, I would say the hardest thing for me to deal with was losing my grandmother mm. last year because my grandmother, a lot of people don't know this because I don't really speak too, too much about it, but I don't have like my mother or my father anymore because I lost them when I was really young. Uh, so my grandmother was like a mom to me. So, um, I took care of her and everything. So I lost her two days before Christmas. And so that was in 2019, but it carried over into 2020 right mm -hmm. so that was kind of the hardest thing for me to deal with because at the time I was still trying to work I was still trying to like do music while losing her and I had to hurry up and become an adult and like pay bills and like deal with a you know my grandmother dying so mm -hmm. that was definitely the hardest thing and honestly I think time helped me overcome it because you never fully get over death but you learn how to cope with it mm -hmm. and I feel like that's something that I've learned how to cope with mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Do you think you took a lot of that experience and have been able to channel that into the music then, as far as how you're approaching it now? I do. I feel like, um, I think I do now, you know, because I used mm -hmm. to not want to talk. I had this thing that I wanted to more so talk about love, but now, I mean, I'm still talking about love, but it's in like a general aspect of love. Like, I can talk about love from a parent or love from a grandmother. Or loneliness, uh, like that's a big thing I like to talk about in my music because I feel like a lot of us feel so empty, mm -hmm. but we just don't want to, of course, say that, you know. So vulnerability for sure has taught me how to open up more on my music, and yeah, for sure, dealing with her death definitely made me want to talk about that more. Mm -hmm. It's crazy because one of my favorite R and B singers right now that's coming out is uh, Aaron Ray out of Cincinnati. I don't know if you know him at all, but I saw an interview. I didn't know he was from Cincinnati. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's incredible, and he produces too. So he's he's one of my favorites right now. I saw an interview with him. Uh, it was probably an interview that got done around 2018 or 19. He was talking about kind of what you just said, where it's like when they expect R and B, they always expect love songs. But he wanted to make more than just love songs for people. Like he said, he had a lot of different you know avenues he could go on. He has songs where he's more rapping and things like that. So he's like he didn't want to just limit it to that. And he said something along the lines of it makes people when they hear it really see the different sides of you as an artist you know what i mean like yeah. you can show your versatility and you can be more vulnerable and tell people yeah. the different parts of your life um which i thought was very yeah. interesting it's kind of weird you brought that up so yeah and, I, and that's true too because people can can you still hear me good yeah yep okay because my ear pod died um, uh, no worries. but it's interesting that you said that because um i think the biggest thing that we have to do with now in the world is like, as artists, is like you have to relate to your audience. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you're not relatable to your audience, a lot of them are not going to really want to support you because they don't mm -hmm. understand you. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of us could deal with trauma, you know, like everyone falls in love, right? But people, artists love, I mean, not artists, fans love to be in your business. They want to know how you think, you know, what you ate today. So it's like you got to have that relatability and if you don't have it they won't really ride for you mm -hmm. but so i like that he said that too and i like that you brought that up so yeah no that's I, I definitely agree with that yeah so you just mentioned a good point too about kind of revealing to fans um you know certain parts of your personal life and whatnot so for you do you think you'll ever get to a point where 
you kind of don't want to, I mean, even before we started recording, you mentioned something about you were taking a break from social media and whatnot. And I know like when you reveal certain things on social media, even if it's something personal to you, sometimes, you know, people can always like attack you for certain things. Like, have you ever thought about that as far as it goes for your career or does that not really cross your mind that much? Yeah, I mean, it's something that I think I definitely, that's why eventually I kind of want to, I want to control my social media, but the bigger I get, I would definitely like to probably hire someone in like PR, Mm -hmm. someone that can kind of control my Instagram and stuff like that. Because for me, it's like, I'm either private or like I'm not private. Mm -hmm. So, um, I need, I want to find a really good balance with that. So like, because I've been doing a lot of soul searching, I feel like I haven't really been as relatable or I haven't really been, you know, talking to my supporters as much as I usually would and which can also hinder me because Mm -hmm. I I feel like that's something that I've always been good at. I've always been good at like relating and talking to people that support me. So that's something that I want to work on. So I definitely think in the future it could, you know, hinder you if you don't get control of it or like if you don't have like that type of balance. Um, but yeah, I think eventually I probably will hire like PR, you know, when yeah. I get the money or something, and yeah. they can control what I should be saying <laughs> and everything. Yeah. So yeah. Say it saves you the headache, you know what I mean? So why not? Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. But yeah. but I do like to open up and talk to people. Just like no matter how big my platform is, I always want, and that's always been important. Like you know, we all as artists look up, like people like Adam I. And they probably tell you, like, you got to talk to your supporters. You know, you got to love your supporters. You can't just abandon them, right? Mm -hmm. So it's something that I, you know, I like to do, but I got to, like, have a balance, I guess. Yeah. Just like everything else, find that balance. Whatever works for you, that's, you know, what you got to do. So for sure. Right, for Um, sure. As, so as far as the music business, uh, you're, you said you're about two years in now. Is there anything music business related that you've kind of struggled with or maybe had to overcome uh, as far as just learning, again, kind of what's good for you and what you're trying to do as far as your career trage- trajectory goes? Yeah, I'm glad you said that. I learned two things, so networking. So mm-hmm. I'm really good with like connecting with people online right mm-hmm. um and i have a very like vibrant personality i get along with a lot of people it's just when it comes to music i have sometimes i feel like i used to struggle with dealing with like myself and then like my persona as an artist so it was always like networking with people and like being afraid to either get too close to people because you know you're not really knowing if it's genuine mm-hmm. or if it's not um but that can hinder you because music is business mm-hmm. so at the end of the day you know, as much as we as artists want to be like, you know, all oh, this for the vibe, whatever, like it is. But it's like at the same time, you got to connect with people. You mm-hmm. got to get your name out there. Um, so definitely that like online presence is just as important as face to face. Because see, that's when you really connect with someone, right? When you yeah. see them in person. So that and then also I would say live performances. So last year I did not really perform as much as I should have. Um, but this year, you know, I've learned, you know, you gotta, you gotta get out there. You gotta perform and people gotta see your face. You know, I know you're shy, but you know, you gotta do it. Right. So, um, that's something that helped me. I know I need to do a lot more live performances. So I've been definitely picking that up more. That's a, a big learning lesson because you can really gain like local fans and local support when you do a lot of more live shows. Mm-hmm. So those are my two things that I feel like I definitely learned so far. Yeah. How many live shows have you done so far? Like, have you got a chance to do any, or? Um, I don't know. I think I've done, like, seven. I haven't done a lot. You know, like, I'm not like that. But I've done, you know, I I do them. Like, I've done a set. I've done a few sets and stuff like that. Um, But, yeah, I try to keep it to a minimum, especially when I'm not, like, if I don't have my rollout planned, I try to kind of like steer away because mm-hmm. I know I'm sometimes like, like right now I'm more so focused on performing and finishing the album, but yeah. usually I try to stick to one thing, Yeah, you know? So. It's good to be so, prepared yeah. too, I think, because like you don't want to rush, especially if you like end up opening for someone in the future or like have your own like tour or something. It's like, I feel like that's something yeah. you do need to prepare for and kind of be 
you know, ready for it and ready for the crowd and the atmosphere and everything. So I don't see any problem with taking your time. You know what I mean? I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. I, and then also, like I said, when I first started, I was just so nervous. I was so mm-hmm. scared of everything. It was like, I was scared of people. Cause I was like, I, like I said, I don't want to get close to you. And then like, I don't connect with you. And, and then also, you know, when you're in a, so like some of the performances, like my first performance, uh, performance was very, it was a bunch of rappers oh, and like, man. they got me, you know, singing about love and like, you know, all of that. It's just like, it's just, it, the, the crowd wasn't right for yeah. me, right? Just learning your audience, too. I've learned that. Mm-hmm. So. so when someone hears, you know, a Kyle Malik song, what to you is something that you would want them to take away from it? Like, I guess the question is, when they hear your music, what is something you want to leave them with at the end of it? Um, I want my music to be like therapy to people. So that's why I'm so vulnerable in my lyrics, because I want people to take a way that it's okay to be hurt. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's okay to feel some type of pain. Like, I grew up very... Um, I was always in tune with my emotions, but I didn't really express them. So I would express them through writing. Mm -hmm. So that me writing is my way of like communicating with people and also being able to kind of like relate with them and connect to at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I would say just that it's okay to be vulnerable. I try to talk a lot more about self love too. You know, like it's okay to be heard about them, but eventually you gotta, you gotta move on because you're only going to, you're going to die alone, unfortunately. So you got to take that and you got to, like, roll with it. Mm-hmm. So I, I really try to talk about self-love and mental health, too, because that's important. Like, I know a lot of people struggle with depression and anxiety, and there's a lot of people around me that struggle with it as well. So I feel like it's only right for me to, you know, put it out there, mm-hmm. I guess. Now, you talked about this album. We brought it up a few times now. So when can we expect it? You think, do you have a timetable as far as the release date, or are you still kind of in the midst of it? Like, what what, what are you thinking what we can expect, maybe a single or maybe the full thing? Well, it'll definitely be out this year. I'll say that. Um, I don't really – and another thing, I'm still kind of – because I'm still a local artist and I'm still kind of building my brand – I still am deciding if it should be an album or if it should be an EP. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because being a smaller artist, you know, you got to think of your budget. And, like, I think of, like, I don't know if I want to put out 13 good songs and then it's kind of like, oh, wow. You know, it's like they just get thrown away. People love five of them. So it's all about keeping people hungry for the next thing. So it might not be an album. So I I don't want to say album. But my next project is definitely going to be out this year. Um, I'm aiming towards November, hmm, okay. but you should expect something in October. Like October is going to be a really good month. Nice. So yeah, yeah. Well, you know I'm ready for it, man. Whatever it is, I'll be the first one to listen, no doubt. <laughs> I appreciate yeah, that. You've always been super supportive. Like I, like, and I always try to let you know that. Like I see you and I appreciate you and I thank you because that's just super genuine. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. Like I said, I just thank you for having me on your show. Like, definitely. Yeah, man. Well, I only got a couple more questions for you here, and then we'll wrap up. And these are three questions I always ask everybody. The first one is, if you could go back 10 years ago, maybe change something or maybe not change anything at all, what do you think you would do? If I can go back 10 years and change something, I wish that 10 years ago I was a lot more uh, outspoken as I am now. So, when I was younger, I used to be very, to myself, super quiet, you know, um, didn't, I mean, it still kind of connects to my adult life, it's just, I'm not really scary, per se, but just kind of like, I just would tell myself to kind of just like, just be you, and, you know, kind of like, forget what anybody else thinks of you, because they really don't matter. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, and it's just, just going for it, just going for whatever you want to go for, I, I used to be afraid to take that leap of faith because of how I would look or of how people would think of me and it's like people really don't matter like even the people that you went to high school with you look back and you're like who are they <laughs> they don't even matter like you don't even talk to them anymore so just really just you know march to the video on drum and 
not caring about opinions because everyone has one. Yeah. So let's say 10 years from now, where do you think you envision yourself and your career and your life in general? It's 10 years now. So wait, would I be talking to myself now or then? Probably then, yeah. Then? Um, I would say I'm glad that you stuck to what you stuck to. And I'm glad that you always believed in yourself. Because, you know, leaving school and stuff like that, a lot of people looked at me and was like, oh, wow, like, you're going to leave school and you're going to pursue music full time. Like, that's a, a big leap of faith, you know. Um, and I've honestly, like, inspired, and not to, like, toot my own horn, but in a good way, I've inspired so many people, like, in my area and in my community to want to really follow their dreams. And that's, like, I feel like that's my mission statement. Like, I want people to want to dream. Like, people are so afraid to say, hey, I want to act, or hey, I want to sing, because they want to, like, fit everybody else's, you know, lifestyle. And it's like, that's not me. I don't think I was born to be like that. So, basically, just telling myself, like, I'm glad you stuck to what you stuck to. Mm. Final question here. Do you have any final words of wisdom for the listeners today? You said, do I have any final words of wisdom? Yes. Well, um, stay true to yourself. Take care of your mental. You know, um, and honestly, just don't give up. Like, and I know that's a typical word of wisdom. Don't give up. Follow your dreams. But be consistent as well. Consistency mm-hmm. will take you so far. Yeah. And be disciplined. And I feel like you will get to where you need to go. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, those are my words of wisdom. Love it. Well, Kyle, that's all I have for you today. Uh, man, I appreciate the time. Keep up the good work, man. I love all your music, everything you're doing. I wish you luck wherever you end up, if you end up moving next year or whenever. Uh, I think it's all going to work out the way it's supposed to be for you, man. So keep it up. Thank you so much. And like I said, thank you again for having me. You were great. Thanks, guys, for listening today. That was episode number 68. We'll be back this time next week. As always, hit the support button on your podcast streaming platform if you'd like to send any funds. And feel free to leave us that five-star rating if you enjoyed today's episode. So we'll see you then. Thanks, guys.